Are the Las Vegas Raiders ready to win the Super Bowl? That's the question. That's the video title. That's what we are going to center this video around. Um, I, I kind of want to just give you guys my thoughts and opinions. You know, this is one of the questions that a lot of you guys ask me every day. Like people are reaching out on Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, and I really appreciate all the uh, comments and questions. Uh, so if you guys are on those platforms, give me a follow, man. Just uh, search SanGT. You guys will find me. Uh, but are the Raiders ready to win the Super Bowl? Are they ready to compete for a Super Bowl? If not, what's holding them back? Who are some players, some free agents that we can go out and potentially target? Let's just get right into it. Uh, we're going to pretty much break down the Raiders and how they're built and why I personally think they're ready to compete, man. I really believe this is the year. Uh, you know, last year and even the year before, the Raiders were held back for two reasons. Depth. Depth, depth depth on top of depth the second reason was because of their defense um when you combine those two things what do you get right you don't have depth so you get injuries nick kukowski goes down Corey littleton goes down uh, at the same time you might have to reshuffle your offensive line your wide receiver might go down right so you have issues right away because of depth and then you look at the defense you look at the miami game our defense couldn't hold them for what 26 seconds when they had like one timeout. that's horrible Horrible, horrible, horrible. And that's all defense. At the same time, uh, you know, Marcus Mariota took us downfield. He got he, he got us to kick field goal against the Chargers, and we weren't able to stop them on the defensive side of the ball. You look at the uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. The score is 20 to 23 at one point, and then the defense kind of blows it, right? Um, when we need a stop, you know, the offense is turned balls over, all right? It's a, it's a fact. It's the NFL. But when we need our defense to step up because maybe the offense makes one mistake, the defense can't do it. And those are the types of things that really kill the Raiders. And that, that's what's killed us the last two years. This year is different. Much different this year. Um, as you guys know, not only are we deeper, not only do we have more depth, but our defense is way better. And we'll get into the defense, but let's talk about the depth a little bit first. Uh, it's not even just the offense, right? Like our receivers... We have five good wide receivers, right? Like Willie Sneed is technically our fourth wide receiver at this point. Uh, and he was the Saints, what, number two receiver at one point. He was with the Ravens last year. He was their number two wide receiver. I think the Raiders have a lot going for themselves. And then it's not even just the receivers and, and on the offense, right? And we'll talk about the offense line. I think the depth there, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, shaky a little bit. We'll talk about that. But then you look at the defense and you look at the depth there. At one point, I thought Quentin Jefferson was going to be the Raiders starter. Like, and I was cool with that. I was like, this guy's going to be the starter. He's a pretty good football player. I watched him with the Bills. He does some good things. Quentin Jefferson is now the fourth defensive tackle for the Raiders after McCoy, Hankins, and Darius Vinelon. In my opinion, anyways. I think those are the top three. And then Quentin Jefferson's four. And then Solomon Thomas is number five. Solomon Thomas was starting for the Niners like three seasons ago. And he's now our fifth guy, like on the defensive line, defensive tackle specifically. Uh, and then even the defensive ends, like Carl Nassib was starting with Gerald McCoy just a couple years ago for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? Like three years ago, Carl Nassib was starting, and now he's the fourth defensive end for the Raiders. Malcolm Kuntz is a rookie, so I don't really go there. Even when you look at the secondary, like, and I, I like Carl Joseph, right? But I get why we cut him. I, I get how Roderick Teamer outperformed him. I know we do have some young players, right? Gillespie's young, Merrick's young. Uh, but then even Jonathan Abram, he's ready to take that next step. Jonathan Abram's hungry, wants to prove himself. Uh, then you look at the linebackers, and there has been some issues at the linebacking uh, position in terms of depth. But we brought in two linebackers, two good linebackers, guys that have played in this league for many years, guys that have proven themselves. And that's what the Raiders are going in with in terms of depth. Now, let's just talk about the defense in general. Right, let's let's talk about these players that we have. Um, and I'll start with Gerald McCoy. I don't think people understand how big of a signing this is. The scope of bringing in a player like Gerald McCoy is humongous. To be honest, Gerald McCoy is probably the Raiders' best defensive player. At the current moment, he is probably the best defensive player. Now, health is a concern, absolutely. But when it comes to being explosive, when it comes to being able to win, he does everything. And if Gerald McCoy isn't the best player, you guys tell me who it is. Last year, I would have, you know, I would have said it was between Jonathan Abram and, and Nick Kukowski. 
And this year, Kwiatkowski wasn't even going to start. That's how improved our defense is. Again, Joe McCoy, I, I think, is the best player we have on the on the defense. And then right after him, and it's it's kind of close, right, is Yannick Ngagwe. And those two guys win, right? Like, it's hard blocking those guys. Like, for an offense to block those two guys is hard. And then you consider the fact that Hankins is, is still developing into something special, in my opinion. Right? He's probably one of the best run, run defenders. Uh, he doesn't have it when it comes to pass rushing, but he's been working on it. He's been working this offseason. He's put the, the, the video out there on, on his Instagram of him working. Uh, at the same time, Darius Philon looks disruptive as well. Uh, I know he was going up against uh, second string guys and, and third string guys in preseason, but he's also that second or third string guy himself. And he's better than those guys, right? So he, he was clearly better than all those players out there. Uh, and I like what I see from Phylon, man. I, I think he brings something special to the Raiders. And again, he's the third defensive tackle for the Raiders. Um, he's not going to play a ton, right? Like, he'll play, but he won't play a ton. Um, and then you look at Max Crosby, who 17 sacks in two years. 17 that's you can't you can't deny those that man that that's a statistic like you can't take that away from him even Cleveland Farrell's not horrible right what, what's he had like six and a half seven sacks over the last two years that's not horrible either right like for a player who we knew his weakness was pass rushing it's something he had to improve on that's not horrible and you know I'll be honest him becoming a bench player I don't think his sack numbers will now be there because he's now you know a second string guy but I will say this one of the the benefits of Cleveland being a bench player or coming off the bench is if the Raiders do re-sign him, which I think they should when his contract comes to an end. Uh, actually, I think after this year, this is his third year, he'll be eligible for a contract. Um, and we'll also have to decide on his fifth year option. Now, we're not going to pick his fifth year option up. Uh, so he'll be here for four years. And if he decides he doesn't want to come back to the Raiders, he'll he'll get that decision. But the Raiders will try to bring him back. And the thing is, is because he doesn't start, he doesn't have the numbers. He might just come back to the Raiders, and, and we we can get him for a team-friendly contract. And the thing is, is, if we can get him for another three to four years after his rookie contract, after his fourth season, if we can get him for three or four more years, those are going to be his prime years. Those are the years that he's going to have developed into a pass rusher. Because, let, let's face it, he might not be there this year either, right? Like, let's say he was at 50% last year, and this year he's now at 75%. You know, going into year four or five, he'll be at like 90 to 95 percent. Like that's where he'll be at in his career in terms of his pass rushing. Right. Uh, uh, and, and again, that's that's like our third defensive end. Right. And again, that's just the defensive line. Then you look at a guy like KJ Wright. KJ Wright was what the 67th ranked player on the NFL top 100. And I know that doesn't mean a lot. A lot of that is like popularity contests and stuff like that. But he was still ranked and he's still well respected. And then even statistically last year, he had 11 tackles for a loss. And that's not a Gus Bradley defense, right? I believe the Seahawks defensive coordinator is Ken Norton Jr. Ken Norton was our defensive coach, and he was terrible, right? I mean, he wasn't terrible, but he wasn't that good, right? And the thing is, is now we have Gus Bradley. Gus Bradley's well-respected. He's he's one of those guys that uh, if you ask a, a person within the league, right, if, like a head coach, right, you go and ask... Um, the Rams head coach or, or, or the Niners head coach and you ask about Gus Bradley they will tell you Gus Bradley knows what he's doing Gus Bradley has not only co uh, coached players he's seen players he's uh, drafted players he's even produced good assistant coaches that have become head coaches Robert Sala being a, a perfect example he was a assistant uh, with the Jaguars under Gus Bradley uh that's just one example that I know of personally. I'm sure there's other guys that have worked under Gus Bradley that have went elsewhere and done well. Um, I think Bradley's a great coach, and I think that's going to help KJ Wright get back into form. 11 tackles for a loss is no joke. I know he had, I think, a sack or two. He might have had an interception, a forced fumble. Uh, but he's coming back into a Gus Bradley scheme that's going to favor what he need, what he does, right? He, he's a strong side linebacker. He plays two yards off the line of scrimmage. He sets the edge. Those are the things he does. Um, and again, I don't know how much he'll play. I don't know how much Tanner Muse will now play. But either way, I think KJ Wright and Raiders, I think is a perfect fit, man, uh, for, for everybody. Um, and then you look at Kwiatkowski, who, in my opinion, was the Raiders' best player last year. I don't know what the hell happened. I think Gus Bradley's scheme is obviously different than Paul Gunther's from last year. And maybe Kwiatkowski doesn't fit it. 
Um, I'm not sure, but I do think when the pads come on, when the when the season rolls around, I do think Gus Bradley will see more from Quit, and he'll say, "Hey, this is the guy, man. He sees good football play." Uh, it's unfortunate what happened with Nick Morrow, but I will say this: when Week Six, Seven, or Eight comes around, we will get Nick Morrow back, and he will be healthy, and he will be the guy. You know, he was going to be the guy for the Raiders defense. He was going to be the man in the middle. He was going to be running things. Um, he'll come back healthy week seven or eight when all these other guys are beat up, right? That's what Morrow will bring to the Raiders. Now, uh, Littleton, I'll hold my thoughts on him, but I think he can get back into form as well, right? Like, you know, you know, what's crazy is even like, uh, Lamarcus Joyner, right? With the Raiders brought him in, he ultimately failed with the Raiders. Uh, although I, I would say his second year was better than his first year. Ultimately he failed, but you can put that blame on, on Gus around uh paul gunther right not having gus Bradley makes a big difference at the same time uh, i think the same thing's gonna happen with Corey littleton i i think he's gonna have a much better year this year and the thing is is the raiders can move on from him after this year uh, i think he has he signed a three or four year contract but only two years are guaranteed which means after this year if we don't want him we don't have to pay him um and again a lot of that will also depend on divine diablo and Javin white and how those guys develop because I'll be honest, I'd rather save the you know ten to twelve million dollars that we're paying Littleton, and I'd rather invest that elsewhere if Littleton or if if White and and Divine Diablo are are there right if they're there in terms of uh, development. Um, those are the linebackers. Let's jump to the secondary again. Are the Raiders Super Bowl bound? Could they compete? Absolutely, man. I, I really think they can. Um, not only for the the D, D line that I've talked to you guys about the linebackers, but even the secondary. Uh, you know, people have asked me, how do you feel about Jonathan Abram? Do you still feel that he has a superstar potential? Absolutely, man. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't say it more, right? I can't, I, I can't tell you guys how I feel about Jonathan Abram. Uh, and people will say, you know, you're a homer or you're this or you're that. That's fine. You know, you guys can say whatever you want. Uh, but I will also say this, like, I don't think Solomon Thomas is going to be a good football player, right? Like I, 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 you guys can go back and see what I think about him what I said about him after week one of preseason and how I feel like he doesn't have the pass rushing skills uh, to be a starting defensive tackle for the Raiders, at least this year. Um, you guys can go and see what I say about some of our other players, right? Um, I think Jonathan Abram's different, right? He's built differently. And the thing is, it's like I've asked Max Crosby, uh, even Colton Miller, and I said, you know, tell me some defensive players that, that stick out to you. And he mentioned Abram. And again, he's a, he's a tackle. He doesn't go up against Abram. He goes up against the defensive ends and defensive tackles. Um, he also mentioned Max and Cleveland as well. Uh, but, you know, it's crazy because I still feel that Jonathan Abram over a lot of other players, he just has this, uh, he has this mindset. And I, I don't know how to really explain it to you guys without giving you guys, I'll give you guys an example. Uh, when I used to play football, there was a player that uh, that was on our team and he had this mindset that he was the best player out there. He was better than everyone. Uh, and he would he would want the best out of everybody. He would yell at his players. And for me personally, I didn't like that. I would say, you know, like, this guy's yelling at everybody. But, you know, like, relax. Um, but today, I'm friends with that guy. And, and today, when I look back at his mindset, I would say this guy wanted to win. He wanted to be great. And he's doing great things in his life. But those are the type of players that you want on your team. And, and that guy was the best player on our team, right? Like, easily, he was the best player on our team. And I think Jonathan Abram brings that same mindset. Like, he yells, and he screams, and he fights, and he gets in people's faces. But it's because he wants to win. He wants to be great. Uh, you know, he uh, Jonathan Abram did an interview. I can't remember who it was, it was with. Uh, but it, he did an interview. Uh, you can just put in Jonathan Abram interview. It was like a full podcast. I don't know if it was with the NFL Network, Sports Illustrated. Um, it was with one of those those crews. You guys can check it out. It was from after his rookie year, um, going into his second year. And they asked him a ton of good questions, man. And they were trying to get his his mindset, his, you know, how he thinks. And the way he thinks is the way top-tier football players think, right? They're hungry. They want to win. Uh, and, and I'll give you guys, you know, just some other examples. Like when Solomon Thomas talks, for example, how many times does Solomon Thomas tell you he wants to be a great football player or that he puts effort in to be a great football player? At the same time, when Solomon Thomas talks or when you watch his body language, it doesn't seem like he gets it, right? Like he, it doesn't seem like he understands what it takes to be a great football player. On the other hand, when you watch Jonathan Abram, he shows it, he, he does it, right? And again, 
I'm kind of going on about Abram, but uh, in short, I think Abram's going to be a great football player, man. I, I really think he's going to be a special football player. I think he brings so much to the Raiders. Um, and we'll see, right? Ultimately, I could be wrong. I've been wrong with other players. I'm, I'm not by any means uh, 100% in, in my uh, assessment of players, right? Uh, no one is, right? That, that's why there's so many busts in the NFL. Um, but I think Jonathan Abram has it. Uh, I, I think he's shown already enough for me. I know he has some mistakes, right, in coverage specifically. Um, but a scheme and a system takes a player to the next level. And I think that's the case with Abram. And we'll see what happens this year. Uh, Trayvon Merrick, I think he'll be a good football player. But I don't know if he'll have it this year for the Raiders. Again, I think he'll be a perfectly fine football player. Um, I think Nate Hobbs is the real deal as well. I, I put the All-22 film on of him in the first two weeks. Nate Hobbs is the real deal, man. There's there's no question about it. Nate Hobbs is the guy. He might be the Raiders' best player going into next year. Like, no joke. That's the type of player Nate Hobbs is. Uh, he was an outside corner in college, and they converted him into a, a slot corner. Uh, if you guys don't know the story of how, uh, of how Mike Mayock found Nate Hobbs, very interesting story. He just got into it, into his presser a little bit. I'll kind of just wrap it up from the top of my head of, of how I remember him saying it. But uh, basically, Mike Mayock got a call from a, uh, a cross scout, which is someone who um, doesn't scout the team directly, but he scouts another team. But they'll they'll go to other teams and they'll, they'll cross scout, right? Uh, so I don't know how much scouts the Raiders have. I'm going to assume it's probably like a, a group of like 20 guys. Uh, and a cross scout reached out to Mike Mayock and said, hey, have you checked this Nate Hobbs kid out? And Mike Mayock says, yes, I've, I've seen his. We have a grade on him, right? Might have been like a C. And that cross scout says, no, you need to go check this guy out. I think your grade's too low. I think this guy would be a starter on your team. Uh, Mike Mayock spent the next hour and a half watching Nate Hobbs' tape. And Mike Mayock said, who the hell is this kid? He and then Mike Mayock said, "I went downstairs or upstairs or something like that, and I got Ron Miles, the the DB coach, and I said, you need to go watch this kid and tell me your thoughts and opinions on this kid.'" Ron uh, Miles checked him out as well, and he was like, "Whoa!" And so basically, all these guys were just you know they went through the process, and every single one of these guys were like, "Who the hell is this kid?" They ended up taking him, and that eye, that cross scout that initially found him, I don't even know who the hell it is. We'll probably never know. But that cross scout, because keep in mind, there was another scout, an area scout or whatever, that probably watched Nate Hobbs and said that, uh, yeah, you know, he's probably like a C. You know, maybe you'll get him as an undrafted player. And that's not what Mike Mayock thought. Mike Mayock took him in the fifth round. And you know what's crazy is uh, Nate Hobbs' coach in college was Lovey Smith. And I'm surprised because Lovey Smith is now the defensive coach of the Houston Texans. I'm surprised Lovey Smith did not draft him. Like, I, you know, if, if you know, like, hey, this guy's potentially a special football player. This guy's one of our best players. Why not take him in, like, the fourth round? I'm surprised, right? Because Lovey Smith just coached him, went, came into the league, and did not draft him, which is crazy. Uh, but the Raiders lucked out. And, again, I think Nate Hobbs has, has you know, he could be a special player, man. I think he has it written all over him. Uh, I, I think Mullen, Hayward, Arnett, and Robertson are all going to be solid football players as well for the Raiders this year. And and again, I, I think those guys will have huge impacts, positive impacts. Um, Damon Arnett is the one guy that I'm not really sure about because uh, Arnett is better in man coverage than he is in zone, which doesn't mean he can't play zone, right? Man coverage is 10 times harder than zone coverage. Zone coverage is much easier. Obviously, he'll have to get better in zone. If you look at those uh, two plays that Arnett made against the Niners, they were in man coverage. So again, he made two plays in the Niners, both in man coverage. We'll see how that translates into when he plays zone coverage. Um, again, I think the defense looks great, man. I, you know, I, I was on the Autumn Wind, Windbags uh, podcast uh, just recently, and I told them I think the Raiders have a top 10 defensive line. I think we have a top 10 defense in general. When you look at the players we have, like we literally have superstar players, right? We have Jerome McCoy, Yannick Ngagwe, Max Crosby. And the D-line is the most important part of a defense. You can win a Super Bowl with a good D-line. The Eagles did it. Great D-line, terrible secondary, and they won a Super Bowl because of that D-line. And the fact they're able to generate pressure. But it starts with the inside, right? The Eagles had uh, Fletcher Cox. Starts with the inside. Got to get that pressure. 
um, from the inside. And I think McCord brings that pressure. And then you mix in Flylon, you mix in Quinton Jefferson. You know, Jefferson was a starter last year, and he's now our fourth defensive tackle. That's the type of depth the Raiders have at this point. Uh, and then you look at, you know, KJ Wright, who's a really good football player. Casey Hayward, really good football player. People can say, oh, you know, they're up there in age. But I, I would make the argument, Bill Belichick's defense is also up there in age. And he always has one of the best defenses in the league. Uh, you're better off having younger uh, players in like the second and third string spots and veterans at the first string spots because veterans teach younger players. Uh, if you have 10 players in their first year as second or third string guys, right, which the Raiders probably do on the defense side of the ball. What ends up happening is out of those 10 players, two of those 10 will become starters, good starters. And it's the veterans that pave the way for those guys. It's the veterans that teach those guys. Uh, and then four years later, you get another group of 10 guys. And then those two guys that became starters in you know five years will be the guys to teach the next set of guys, right? And that's that's how you get good defenses for a long time. And of course, consistent uh, coaching. Co coaching is the biggest thing. Uh, that's why I think having a, a defensive-minded coach is always better than having an offensive-minded coach uh, because defense wins Super Bowls, right? The second Gus Bradley decides to leave, the second he gets a head coaching position, uh, again, I, I don't expect Gus Bradley to be here for eight years, right? He'll be here for three to four years and then he'll probably move on somewhere else. Um, but again, you know, when he does move on, we'll see who the Raiders bring in as their defensive coach. Either way, that's that's kind of my thoughts on the defense. Let's just shift over, quickly go over the offense. I don't think the offense is 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 that big of a topic to talk about. Like, we know what we have on the offense. I, I think the only question marks that I have is the offensive line. I think the Raiders' offensive line is questionable. And again, I would also make the argument that the Raiders' offensive line... Uh, we picked some guys up, right? Like, let's let's be honest. We we, we brought some guys back. Uh, I think we signed up four offensive linemen to the practice squad. Uh, Jeremiah Patasi, even though I don't think he's ready, he is a veteran, right? He's like five years into the league, which I had no idea that he was that that deep into the league. Uh, and then you got guys like uh, you got other guys, right, on there like Lester Cotton, who's coming back again. I think Cotton is huge for the development of Alex Otherwood, right? Both guys played together at Alabama. Uh, both guys are friends. They're cool with one another. It's the same thing with Colton Miller and Honor James. They went to college together. They're cool. They're friends. Um, those are the types of things that matter, right? And again, I think Lester Cotton helps Leatherwood out. And not only that, he provides us with depth. Uh, I think Cotton's a, a good fourth offensive lineman to have, a fourth good guard to have. Um, at the same time, you have Jimmy Morrissey back on the practice squad. And I think that's the big one. Uh, I think down the line, I, I, I this is what I really think. I think Honor James is going to be the Raiders center for the next five to six years, uh, maybe longer. We'll see. Um, and I think Morrissey is going to give the Raiders like a second or third round pick. Like, I think someone's going to trade for him uh, because that's the type of player I think Morrissey could be. I, I, I really believe someone's going to trade for him down the line. Obviously, we'll see if, if that happens. Uh, and another thing that could potentially happen is he'll walk for free agency. He'll sign a two year deal and then he'll get a, a boost after that, after he shows the type of player he is. As confident as I was in Andre James, I'm that confident in Jimmy Morrissey. I, I see it in his game. Um, another thing that I'm very excited about this year is the Raiders only kept three tight ends, man. And I know we brought Derek Carrier back. I, I'm not sure if he's part of the active roster. He might be. Um, I think we're at three tight ends. Someone can probably correct me there. But even then, we got Matt Bushman. And I think Bushman's a good player to keep for the next couple of years. Um the running backs look good, although I don't really know about Peyton Barber. But I will say this, Peyton Barber's a, a player that I've liked for a long time. Uh, I've always drafted, like two years ago, I drafted him for my fantasy football league. He did pretty good, but uh, he's a player that I kind of followed for the last three or four years, uh, fantasy football related. I've always kind of liked him, and I, but I've always felt that he's never had a good O-line to prove himself. Now he does, he, in my opinion. I think the Raiders have a pretty good offensive line. At least the starting five are pretty good. Um, I don't think he's going to get a ton of playing time. I think Kenny and Drake and Josh Jacobs are going to go off this year. I think they're going to be a great one-two duo. Uh, they'll probably be the second best in the league, right after uh, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I think number two will be Jacobs and Drake, and I think we're, Jacobs is going to get back to form. I think Jacobs hits 12 to 1,300 yards this year with less carries. He's not going to get 340 carries or how many ever he's had over the last couple of years. Um, 
And then even then, I think Derek Carr takes the next step and he takes the leap and he becomes, you know, back in a 2016 form. Uh, I don't think last year was as good as 2016. I don't think he was close, to be honest. Um, but I think he'll get back to that form. He's going into year four, I believe, with Gruden. Um, so he knows the offense in and out. He can tell you every little thing. It's really going to come down to does Brian Edwards and Henry Ruggs stay healthy and do they understand the offense the same way that Derek Carr understands the offense? Uh, same with Waller, right? Is Waller there as as where Carr is? And I think most of those guys are. I, I really think they are. Um, Kenny and Drake will have that learning curve. He'll be fine, though. He's, he's a running back, so his, his part is a little bit easier. Um, I'm excited, man. Because even if, if something were to happen to Carr, right? Knock on wood. But if something were to happen on Carr, to Carr, I think Marcus Murray can step in and, and c carry a team. And not him carry the team, more so the team will carry Mariota. I think Mariota is good enough that if a team can carry him, and again, I think the defense can be top tier this year. I really do. Like, I don't think we downgraded anywhere. Like, literally, there's nowhere we downgraded. Uh, O-line, right, general, as, as a general unit, I think we got better than last year. I know individually you can say Trent Brown where he was at if he's healthy is better than Leatherwood but he wasn't healthy right I would say Leatherwood's better than the mixture of Sam Young and Brandon Parker uh, at the same time uh, I I made this argument last year I think Denzel Good is better than Gabe Jackson I really believe Good is a better guard than is Gabe Jackson um, Gabe Jackson was good but Good brings this nastiness to the line as does Richie now Richie has to be healthy and that's the biggest question mark I have is is Richie incognito healthy I know we have John Simpson which is fine but I don't know I I, I just don't I don't want to go in with John Simpson I, I, having to come in right I think Simpson's still a year out in terms of his development um, I know he looked better right at times but Simpson's also a better right guard than he is a left guard you watch the tape right week one he played left guard week two in preseason he played right guard and he was better week two than he was week one and again maybe that was just because he needed to get it out he hadn't had enough reps maybe that's what it was um but we'll see right we'll see what happens um super long video i did not think i was going to go this long in this video but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did hit that thumbs up button smash that subscribe button are the raiders super bowl contenders absolutely but I want to know what you guys think. I hope you guys have a great weekend. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.